Hello science fans, get ready to explore one of the most fascinating and powerful elements on our planet. Today we're diving into the world of uranium, a super heavy metal found in rocks, soil, and even seawater. It's a natural element that's hidden all around us, even if we rarely see it up close. Uranium has been around since the Earth was young and is unique because it's naturally radioactive. That means it gives off energy all by itself without any help from us. Uranium atoms slowly break down, releasing energy, a slow-motion firework deep in the Earth. This process called radioactive decay happens over millions of years, making uranium a long-lasting source of energy. Not all uranium atoms are the same, they come in different forms called isotopes. Isotopes are like siblings, similar but with important differences. The two main isotopes are uranium-238 U-238, and uranium-235 U-235. These numbers tell us how many particles are packed inside each atom. U-238 makes up over 99% of natural uranium, while U-235 is much rarer, just 0.7%. That's like finding a single special bead in a giant jar of marbles. This tiny amount of U-235 is crucial. It's the isotope that makes uranium so valuable for energy and science. U-238 is stable and doesn't split easily, but U-235 is fissile, it can be split to release lots of energy. That's what makes it so important for nuclear power. When a U-235 atom splits, it unleashes a burst of energy we can harness for both power and unfortunately, weapons. This process is called nuclear fission, and it's at the heart of nuclear technology. Natural uranium with so little U-235 isn't very useful for energy production, there just isn't enough of the right kind of atom to keep things going. Imagine trying to start a bonfire with mostly damp wood and only a few dry twigs. It's tough to get a good fire going. To get more energy, scientists needed a way to increase the amount of U-235. They had to find a way to separate out more of those rare, powerful atoms. This process is called uranium enrichment. It's a high-tech method that takes a lot of skill and precision. Enrichment means boosting the concentration of U-235. The more U-235, the more energy we can get out. It's the key to unlocking uranium's potential. Without enrichment, uranium's power stays locked away. Without enrichment, uranium can't power reactors or sadly be used in weapons. Enrichment changes everything. Understanding this difference is crucial to understanding uranium's role in our world. It's a story of science, discovery, and responsibility. So how do we enrich uranium? Let's find out together. Science is cool and there's so much more to discover. Why do we need to enrich uranium in the first place? It's a question at the heart of nuclear energy and technology. The main reason is to generate electricity in nuclear power plants which power millions of homes and industries around the world. These plants rely on nuclear fission, splitting the nuclei of U-235 atoms to release huge amounts of energy and free neutrons. The released neutrons trigger more splits, creating a self-sustaining chain reaction that can be carefully controlled. But here's the catch. Natural uranium doesn't have enough U-235 to keep this reaction going for long, it's mostly made up of U-238, which isn't as useful for fission. It's like trying to start a stadium wave with too few people. There just aren't enough participants to keep it moving. That's why uranium fuel is enriched from just 0.7% to about 3-5% U-235 creating what's called Low Enriched Uranium, or LEU. LEU makes it possible to maintain a steady, controlled chain reaction, which is essential for safely generating electricity. The heat from fission boils water, creates steam, spins massive turbines and ultimately produces the power we depend on every day. But enrichment has a darker side, highly enriched uranium or HEU with over 90% U-235 can be used to make nuclear weapons, posing serious risks. The very same process that powers entire cities can also threaten them if misused. That's why uranium enrichment is so sensitive and closely monitored by international agencies and governments. It's a technology with both peaceful and dangerous potential, depending on how it's used and who controls it. Understanding this dual nature is vital for our future, balancing the promise of clean energy with the responsibility to prevent harm. So how do we separate U-235 from U-238 when they're chemically identical? The only difference is their mass, U-238 is just a bit heavier. Early enrichment used gaseous diffusion uranium hexafluoride gas was pushed through barriers with tiny holes, 
Lighter U-235 molecules pass through slightly faster, but the process was slow and energy-hungry. These plants were massive and inefficient. Today, most enrichment uses gas centrifuges. The uranium gas is spun at incredible speeds. Centrifugal force pushes heavier U-238 outward, while lighter U-235 stays closer to the center. This subtle separation is repeated over and over. Centrifuges are far more efficient and use less energy. It's like swapping an old gas guzzler for a high-tech race car. This innovation revolutionized uranium enrichment. Let's see how these centrifuges work together. A gas centrifuge is a tall spinning cylinder filled with uranium hexafluoride gas, designed for a very specific purpose. Spinning at tens of thousands of revolutions per minute, it uses centrifugal force to separate isotopes with incredible precision. Heavier, U-238 moves outward. Lighter, U-235 stays near the center, allowing separation. Engineers collect both slightly enriched and depleted streams for further processing. One centrifuge alone barely increases U-235 concentration, making teamwork essential, so hundreds or thousands are linked in a cascade for greater effect. Each stage boosts enrichment a little more, step by step. The gas flows from one machine to the next, getting richer in U-235 with every pass. This precise, step-by-step -step process is a marvel of modern engineering. It's teamwork at the atomic level, making the dream work. With cascades running, we can produce uranium at different enrichment levels, each with its own unique purpose and impact. Low enriched uranium or LEU contains about 35% U-235. This is the fuel that powers most of the world's nuclear reactors, providing reliable electricity for millions of homes and businesses. LEU is perfect for controlled chain reactions in power plants, safe for energy, not for weapons. Its lower enrichment makes it unsuitable for explosive devices, but ideal for generating clean energy. Highly enriched uranium, or HEU, at 20% U-235 or more, is used in some research reactors and naval vessels, where more concentrated energy is needed for specialized applications. HEU is much more potent and requires strict controls. Its potential for misuse means security is always a top priority. Weapons-grade uranium is HEU enriched to 90% or more U-235. At this level, it becomes extremely dangerous and is closely monitored. This is what's needed for nuclear weapons, why it's so tightly regulated, and why international oversight is so important. The difference between LEU and HEU is huge, not just in how they're used, but also in the risks they pose to society and the environment. LEU lights up cities and powers our lives, HEU in the wrong hands can destroy them in an instant. That's why enrichment levels matter so much, they determine whether uranium is a source of energy or a potential threat. Understanding these categories is key to nuclear safety, regulation, and global security. It's all about the concentration. The higher it is, the greater the risk, and the tighter the controls. The stakes couldn't be higher when it comes to managing enriched uranium and keeping the world safe. Let's look at the risks and why vigilance is essential at every step. Uranium enrichment powers the world, but it comes with serious risks. The biggest concern is nuclear proliferation, the spread of nuclear weapons. The same technology for LEU can be used to make HEU if misused. This breakout capability is why enrichment is so closely watched. There are also environmental and health risks. Mining and enrichment can harm land and produce hazardous waste. Depleted uranium and radioactive materials must be managed safely. Accidents at enrichment plants could release dangerous substances. Strict safety protocols and security are essential. The benefits of nuclear energy must be balanced with responsibility. Science helps us manage these risks. Because uranium enrichment is so sensitive, international oversight is crucial. The International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA, acts as the world's nuclear watchdog. It ensures countries use nuclear technology for peaceful purposes, not weapons. IEEE inspectors monitor facilities, track materials, and build trust. Countries in the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty allow these inspections. Transparency and cooperation are key to global safety. New enrichment methods like laser enrichment are being researched. Lasers could make enrichment more efficient, but also raise new security concerns. Any new technology must be carefully assessed for risks and benefits. The challenge is to balance nuclear energy's promise with strict safeguards. International cooperation and vigilance are essential. Our future depends on using uranium wisely and safely.
Science Rules